Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So on to some tapestry crochet for Valentine's Day. I decided to take this graph can and turn it into a pillowcase. So I got this foam piece at Walmart. This pillowcase can be used with a 12 by 12 foam insert that I'm using. Um, but you still have plenty of room if you wanted to use an actual down filled insert. I don't know what size it is. I actually took the packaging off and I threw it away and I've had this just sitting around for months and months and months and I decided to do something with it. So um, now this particular graph can is good for the sides. I mean it's going to be larger because I'm going to make another panel for the back. It'll be the same size so it'll be it'll be roomy in there but I think I gotta probably lop the top off or I don't know. Um, but anyway if you just want to stuff it with something regular, like just regular, you know, stuffing like this, you can. So that's what we're going to do today, the I Love You pillowcase. And uh, yeah, let's just jump right into this. So for this particular pillowcase, I used a six millimeter. This is just a regular four weight that I'm using. There's going to be um, a two row repeat that comes up for um, from row 8 to row 17 is going to be a two row repeat. Now I'm probably not going to do that with you. I'm going to show you what the two row repeat is and then you're going to have to do that until you get to round 17. So this hopefully won't be too long of a video even though I know it's a ginormous graph can. I'm going to do my best to keep it nice and short. We're going to start off by chaining 51. This is my 51 chain. So there's a lot of ways that you can um, continue your next round. You can just do it a normal 50 single crochets all the way back up and just do normal however you would do it. Or you can do it in the back bumps. Now I'm going to be whip stitching the two ends together. For me, it doesn't really matter, but for you, you can choose to do it any which way you want to do it. I'm only picking up the one piece on this side because I want at least the two pieces on the other side for whip stitching. So 50 single crochets back up any way you want to do it. So that's my first round. For the next five rows, I want you to just put 50 single crochets in each of these stitches and then we'll start the color after that. If you want this to be taller um, to fit your square cushion, then I would do more than five rows at the end and at the or at the beginning and at the end. So it's completely up to you how much taller you need it. So this is my five rows done. I decided not to go extra rows. Um, I'm just going to, um, because mine's too big, I'm just going to lop off a little bit. At, oh, you can't even see me. I'm just going to lop off a little bit at the top here. And then I'm just going to glue it, hot glue it or E6000 it to the side to give me my extra width. So that's all I'm going to do. So this is my five rows. I just did the five rows. So um, we're going to start now incorporating color. So B, you're going to see it written with a B that's going to be black. Easy to remember. A is going to be red, but you don't have to worry about that now. So it's a while before we get to the um, red heart. So First, we're going to do 10 single crochets before we incorporate any colors. This 
This is my 10th stitch. So I'm not going to finish it with my green. I'm going to finish it with my new color, which is black. So I like to just tie these two just to keep them safe. Generally, I do it a couple times, but I'm not going to weave in my black tail just because it makes it too bulky. And that's why I like to tie that little knot. Nobody ever sees the little knot. I don't do it if it's not at the back, but this is at the back of my work, so it doesn't matter. So um, I am weaving in my green because I'm gonna need it along the way. So I'm gonna do six black. On my sixth stitch, I'm going to switch back to my base color. I'm not going to weave in the black because, it again, it's just thick. So I'm going to do five single crochets with my base color. I'm going to finish my fifth stitch with my black. So just when you pull it across, just make sure you're keeping it loosey-goosey. I'm going to do six single crochets with my black. I'm going to finish my sixth stitch with my green. With my green, I'm going to do six single crochets. switch to black. With black I'm going to do three single crochets. Switching back to green. I'm not weaving in my black. I'm going to do 14 single crochets to the end. So we're going to chain one and we're going to turn our work. We're still only using the black and the green. 14 single crochets. So we're, we're doing the lettering and most of the lettering is just um, all the same for the few rows. So 14 single crochets. So my 14th stitch is in the last green one. I'm going to pull that up. So this is the back of my project. I'm just going to pull this across and hold it with my thumb. Finish that stitch with your black. With your black, you're going to do three Bs. On your third B, on your third stitch, on your third B, you're going to finish that with green. And then you're going to do five single crochets. This is my fifth stitch. I'm going to finish it with my black and I'm going to do eight single crochets with my black. Your first stitch will be on the green stitch from the row before. A 
and your last stitch will be on the green stitch from the row before. Finish your eighth stitch with your green. With your green, I want you to do three single crochets. So that's my third one. I'm going to switch to my black. So finish that third stitch with your black. With your black, you're going to do eight single crochets, starting with the green on the green stitch from the row before. And ending on the green stitch from the row before. So this is my eighth stitch. I'm not going to finish it with my black though. I'm going to finish it with my green. And when you pull across, just make sure you're keeping it all loosey-goosey. So finish that with your green. And with your green, you're going to do nine single crochets to the end. Nine, you're going to do eight single crochets. You're going to do two single crochets with your black. Finish that with green. So we're just doing the inside of the letters. With green, you're going to do five single crochets. You're going to finish your fifth stitch with your black, and you're going to do two single crochets. Oh, sorry, you're going to do three single crochets. That doesn't seem right. You're going to do three single crochets with your black. Then you're going to do two single crochets with green. Second stitch you're going to switch to black. And you're going to do two single crochets with black. You're going to switch to green. And you're going to do four single crochets with green. Switching to black on that fourth stitch, you're going to do two black. On your second black, you're going to go to green, or whatever color you're using. You know, I'm just saying the, my colors. You're going to do five single crochets with your green. I'm not going to bring my black. I'm just going to do five with my green. You're going to finish that fifth stitch with your black. With your black, you're going to do three single crochets. And this is always going to be this because this is the letter I. So finish that third stitch with your green and then 14 single crochets to the end. So this is technically where you're just going to start following all the colors. I'll show you in a minute. I like to always count just to make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So, um, this little jog right here is because that's a U. That's what that's all about. I'm going to show you. So from now until row round 17, you're going to be just following these. It's all going to be the same because it's an O, it's a U, and it's a Y. So up until we do the split here, everything is exactly the same. So 
when we read a graph again, we read from this way and then this way. So it's a two row repeat, but it's technically a one row repeat if you're all going in the same direction. But because we're going in two separate directions and the two ends have different sizes, one's 14 stitches, one's eight stitches, um, that's why it's a two row repeat. But all I need you to do for the next uh, six rows, I guess it is, let me just double check. Uh, sorry, the next eight rows. I don't know how to do math, apparently. Yeah, definitely uh, the repeat ends on round 17. And we're going to be starting round 10. So I'm going to leave you here. And I want you to do the next eight rows just following these colors the way they're laid out right now. I'm going to still put my patterns on the screen showing my my B's and my I'm not probably not going to put A for this color but I'm going to put B for black and um, I'll put all that on the screen just so you can follow along that way you know where you're at I would also suggest using one of these and just set this to row 9 right now because this is the row we just finished so when you're done the next one that'll be row 10 and then you can keep track that way that's how I like to keep track I'm just trying to make this video shorter and I will see you after row 17 <laughs> so just follow the just follow your colors So this is what it should look like at this point. Hard to fit it in. I'm zoomed in, but so I am on my 18th row. We are on our 18th row. So chain one, turn your work. We're just going to carry on like I didn't abandon you just now. Untangle myself. So this row starts, it's, things start to become different now. So we're going to do 13 single crochets instead of 14. That's my 13th stitch. So I still have a, a stitch before the black. But I'm going to switch to black. So I'm going to finish that stitch. And on this next green one, this is where I'm going to start. I'm going to do five black. So I'm going to end on the last green, the green stitch from the previous row. I'm going to finish that stitch with my green. And with my green, I'm going to do three single crochets. I'm going to finish that with my black. And with my black, I'm going to do three single crochets. So again, I'm starting on the green stitch from the row before. That's my third stitch. So the center stays the same. 
for the letter. So I'm going to do five single crochets. Oh no, it doesn't. Sorry, because that would have been four single crochets. So that's my fifth stitch. That should be five. And then two black. So I want you to do one green here. So just basically pull up a loop and go back to black. And I want you to do 3B. So on the third stitch, you're going to go back to green. And you're going to do five single crochets. This one's five. The other one was four. Well, they're both five fives now. So on my fifth stitch, I'm going to go back to black. I'm going to do two single crochets. So the U stays the same. The O seems to be changing. And then I'm going to do eight single crochets with my green to the end of the row. Chain one, turn your work. So round 19 is going to be 8 single crochets with your base color. You're going to do 2 black. Then you're going to do five single crochets. We're just doing another repeat again. This time we're repeating something different. Three single crochets with your black. One single crochet with your green, so basically just pulling up a loop going back to the black. Two black. Five single crochets with your base color. And three single crochets with your black. I'm going to do two single crochets with my green. And then I'm going to go to black. So that leaves me a green stitch from the row before to start my black into, and I'm going to do three black. Finish my third stitch with green. I'm going to do one single crochet. So this is the split in the Y. That's what we're doing there. And then three black. So. The last stitch will be on a green stitch from the row before. And then 12 single crochets to the end of the row.
Round 20, you're going to do 10 single crochets with your base color. So I got two stitches before the black, I'm going to go to black. So just make sure when you pull that across that you keep it all loosey goosey. So with my black I'm going to do four black. That's my fourth one. I'm going to go back to my green. And with my green, I'm going to do three single crochets. So one in the black from the row before, one in the middle where we sectioned it, and then the other ones on the black. So we're just making the middle of the Y larger. And then four black. One single crochet with your base color, so basically I'm just going to pull up a loop. I feel like... What the heck went on here? Two, three... I felt like I might have missed a stitch. Anyway, not sure what that big loosey goosey part was. Anyway, I'm going to do my one single crochet. <laughs> this pattern confuses me. And I've already done one. Um, and now I'm going to do two black. So I'm back to the center of my letter. I'm going to do four single crochets. So this one we're getting smaller because it's the O and we're closing in the O. So that's four single crochets. You should still have one green one left from the row before. And then with black, I'm going to do two single crochets. So with my green, I'm going to do two single crochets. The U stays the same because um, it, we don't have to close it in. So we're going to do three, three black, five single crochets with your base, and then two black. Two black. Change back to your base color and then eight single crochets to the end of the row. So this has to get blocked, you can tell it kind of leans to one side, but round 21, we're going to do 8 single crochets. Which takes us right up to the black. We're going to do two black. Nice and quiet now that my furnace shut off. 
And we're going to do five single crochets. Going back to black. And then three black. Lost my green. Two single crochets with your green. I'm gonna close in the zero at this point. So I want you to do eight single crochets with your black. So I have to add more black, that's what I'm doing now. I'm just going to tie these two in a knot back here. One single crochet with your green. So you're basically just pulling up a loop. I don't want that black, I want this black. And you're gonna do three single crochets in black. And five single crochets with your green. Three single crochets with your black. And then 10 single crochets with your base color to the end of the row. Chain one. Turn your work. I'm not sure what this stupid little jog is. I didn't have it in my last one. Something went wrong there. I didn't have that in my last one. And I'm not ripping my whole thing out now. Hopefully when I write it on the screen, I, I obviously missed a stitch somewhere, but... That's my fault. That's not my numbers. All my numbers add up to 50. So as long as all your rows add up to 50, you know you're good. We are on round 22. We're going to do 10 single crochets. And I would do two black. I'm going to do seven single crochets with my green. seven on that black stitch. I'm going to do two single crochets with black. I'm going to do two single crochets with green. That loud bang, I think, was my duct work. With black, I'm going to do six single crochets. Oh, 
with green. Oh, what did I just do? Six single crochets with green. I'm going to do three single crochets. I almost got lost in the pattern. It's bugging me that I screwed up that one letter because I missed a stitch or something. Something happened there. And that's all I'm thinking about right now. So that's three green. Where's my black? Uh, with black, I'm going to do three single crochets. It's so easy to miss a stitch when you are. And I've said that in so many videos, and then I just completely did it and screwed up. And I never even noticed it. That's the sad part. I just noticed it now. Five single crochets with green. And yeah, I could rip it all out and redo the video so you guys don't see my mistake. But you know what? Mistakes happen. And here you go. Now you can see it. Mistakes happen. Even with somebody that's been doing this as long as me. Two single crochets of black. And then you're going to switch back to your base color and do eight single crochets to finish the row. So for the next three rows, you're just going to do green. So we're done our letters. And for the next three rows, um, yeah, it's just one single crochet in each of those 50 stitches with your base color. So I will see you on the other side. So that is my three rows. We can uh, start adding our red in our next round. I've already cut off my black. So I'm probably going to run out of yarn. I, mine's going to end up an ombre. <laughs> I've got this other green to this green. So it's not close. <laughs> so mine's going to be an ombre. But that's okay because I'm using up my using up my um, scrap pieces. So um, your red will be written as color A in the written part of the video. So we're going to start with round 26. We're going to do 30 single crochets with our base color. So this is my 30th stitch. I'm going to pull my red out a bit. So you can finish that with your red. Had to pull that forward. So with your red, you're going to do two single crochets. We go back to green. And do 18 single crochets to finish the row. So that's the point of our heart. You should be at the back of your piece with the adding. So the start of your heart is going to be in between your O and your U. If you've done too many rows here, you would have been at the front of your work for the color change in it and your red would be over here. So. If that's the case, and just take out a row here of your three rows. You might have done four, maybe. Um, but just make sure your color change happened at the back. And that you're in between your O and your U. My 
Moving on, you're going to do 17 single crochets starting row round 27. This is my 17th stitch, so I'm going to finish that with my red. I'm going to pull down on my red because I've got a green stitch prior to hitting the red. So you yeah, should have one green stitch before the red. So with your red, you're going to do four single crochets. So you start in the green stitch from the previous row, and you'll end in the green stitch from the previous row. So I'll go back to your green. I didn't weave that in for some reason. And 29 single crochets to the end of the row with your base color. Easy peasy. We're going to add black though shortly. Round 28. You're going to do 28 single crochets. So this is my 28th stitch, which is obviously one green, because we're working out to build the heart, right? So you should have one green stitch before the red. Try that again. So make sure you're getting into that green stitch and not missing it. You're wanting to do six single crochets with your red. So you're going to end in the green stitch from the row before. And then you're going to do 16 single crochets to the end of the row. So with round 29, we're going to incorporate the black again. I'm going to untangle my black from all the other colors I have sitting here. <laughs> Too many projects on the go. So black's going to start over here somewhere. We've got to do the eye. So it's pretty easy. It's like three blacks, and you're going to follow those three blacks throughout. It, it'll be like, you know, this, because... It's just a letter I. So round 15 is going to be 15 single crochets. That's my 15th stitch, and again, it's one stitch before, one green stitch showing. Oh, my bread does not pull out very well. So, you're going to do eight red. So the eighth stitch will be on a green stitch from the row before. You're going to do 13 single crochets and then we're going to bring back the black. This is my 13th stitch. Unfortunately, it's at the front of my work. I hate doing that. So, 
So with your black, you're going to do the three single crochets I've told you about previously. Go back to your green. You can just let that hang. Eventually it's all going to be intertwined up the eye, so it's not going to go anywhere. And you're going to do 11 single crochets to the end of the row. Round 30, you're going to do 11 single crochets and then your 3 black. So on your third black, you're going to go back to your green, finish that stitch. Now you're going to do 12 single crochets and then 10 red. This is my 12th stitch. I'm going to do 10 red if I can manage to get it going. This is my 10th one. Oh good gosh, my red does not want to come out of this ball, that's why. There we go. So on your 10th stitch, you're going to finish that with your green. And then you're going to do 14 single cro crochets back to the end of the row. Or not back to it, to the end of the row. Round 31. It goes pretty fast, doesn't it? Round 31, you're going to do 13 single crochets and then 12 red. That's my 13th stitch. It's always going to be one before. Always. And now 13 red. Or 12 red, excuse me. So, of course, it comes out on the green stitch from the row before, as normal. Then you're going to do 11 single crochets and then your 3 black. And then 11 single crochets to the end of the row. A 
Almost done. So for round 32, we're going to start with 11 single crochets and 3 Bs, 3 blacks. Three blacks. And now you're going to do ten single crochets over to where the red starts. So this is my 10th stitch and it's again one green one left here. Um, I count anyway just because I already screwed up my O down here. <laughs> so from not paying attention. So I just want to make sure everything's kind of snug. You're going to do 14. So make sure you're getting this green stitch from the row before. I know when you pull across like that it can hide it which might have been how I screwed up my zero or my O. That's my 14th stitch, so I'm gonna go back to my green. And I'm going to do 12 single crochets to the end of the row. If I'm ever uh, saying, don't, okay, how do I say this? Don't always listen to what I say. Um, make sure you're reading what I type because if I screw up and what I say when I edit the video, I'll put down the proper pattern or the proper thing to do on the screen. So. If I say something different than what I write, that's because I've screwed up with what I've said. I've done that in the past. I mean, I still get flack from it, but. So, chain one, turn your work. We're just about done. Round 33. We're going to do 11 single crochets. That's my 11th stitch. Your red is going to be 16 stitches starting in this first green stitch from the row before. And make sure that your last stitch is going to be in the, on the green stitch from the row before. Finish it with your, I keep saying green, you know what I mean, whatever color you're using. So you're going to do nine single crochets and then your three black.
And then we're going to do 11 single crochets to the end of the row. Well, I miscounted that. See, this is how mistakes happen. I got all tangled up there and confuffled. Okay, look at this. Look at this mess I got going on here. All right, that was a mess. So we're gonna do 11 single crochets and then our three black. Then we're going to do 9 single crochets and 16 red. That's my ninth stitch. So now I'm going to do 16 red. There is no green stitch from the row before. We're going to start evening out with our heart. So 16 is exactly what we did last time, so just follow the same colors. So you're going to end on the last red stitch. Come back to your green. Just make sure that's not pulled tight. And with your green, you're going to do 11 single crochets to the end of the row. Round 35 is going to be 10 single crochets. So starting in the green stitch from the row before, you're going to do 18 single crochets. Eighteen is on the green stitch from the row before. It's your eighteenth stitch. Then you're going to do eight single crochets to your three black space and then do your three black.
And then you can do 11 single crochets to the end. That's how much green I have left. I'm going to have to change colors probably either during this row or after the row. Around 36. Sorry, I had a sneeze. Round 36, you're going to do 11 single crochets and then your three black. So you're going to do eight single crochets. I'm going to have to switch colors part way through my thing. Eight single crochets to, till you start the red and then the red, red just follow the red. It's going to be 18 stitches like the row before. That's my 18th stitch. That's all the green I have left from the other color, so I'm going to actually finish this one with my new green. Unfortunately, it's not at the end of a row, which I was hoping for. So just to be on the safe side. So you're gonna do 10 single crochets to the end of the row. Chain one, turn your work. Oh, so that's gonna look like crap. Look at <laughs> Oh well. Anyway, well, I gotta turn my papers. So this is all we have left, this short little bit here. And then I'll show you what I do with this pillow too, because the size isn't gonna be the same, so I'll show you that in the video. This round we're going to start off doing 9 single crochets and then 20 red. My 20th stitch is on the green from the row before. That seemed awkward to me because I'm holding it funny. Uh, 
Um, okay, so now we're going to do seven single crochets till we do get to our three black, and then we're going to do our three black. And then you're going to do 11 single crochets to finish the row. Chain one, turn your work. Hey guys, so from round 38 to round 42 is going to be another uh, two row repeat. I'll make sure I put all of that on my screen for you to read. Uh, first, we're going to do round 38 and 39 together. Round 38. We're going to do 11 single crochets and then our three black. And I'm going to do six single crochets to my red. And with my red, I'm going to do 22 single crochets. Twenty second stitch is on the green one from the row before. And eight single crochets to the end of the row. Round 39, oh, I'm all tangled again. Round 39 is going to be eight single crochets, and then you're just going to do your 22 red following the same thing you just did. Now you're going to use six single crochets and then your three black.
And now you're going to do 11 single crochets to the end of the row. Chain one, turn your work. So this is the end of the two row repeat here. That's where it started, five rows of the exact same thing. Uh, and now we're going to split the heart in two. So, you're going to do eight single crochets, and then you're going to do ten red. So 10 red, this is my 10th stitch, you're going to go back to green and you're going to do two single crochets and then go back to red. So on your second single crochet, switch back and do 10 red. This is my 10th stitch. I'm going to finish with green. I'm all confuffled. And then with green. I got, what are you doing way up there? Come down here. Yeah, that's better. I'm going to do six single crochets and my three black. Where am I? And then 11 single crochets to the end of the row. All right, round 44. You're going to do 11 single crochet and your three black. Then you're going to do seven single crochets. Now we've got to come in with the heart. So your seventh stitch is going to be on the first red of the row before. And you're going to do nine red. That's my ninth stitch. 
going back to green, do your two single crochets. And then nine red. So you're going to have a red one still showing because we're coming in, remember? So I'm going to go back to my green. And I'm going to do nine single crochets to the end. Round 45. I always, I always have to flap this thing all over the place because i got to fold it in half. It's so big. So we're going to do 10 single crochets. So we're still coming in on the heart. So it should be in your red, your last stitch. What the hay is going on? Now you're going to do seven red. That's my seventh stitch. You're going to do four single crochets with your green. This is my fourth one. Going back to red where you're going to do seven single crochets. That's my seventh one. And you're going to do eight, two, four, six, eight. Eight single crochets to your black and then your three black. And then eleven single crochets to the end. So this is going to be our last row with color. So I want you to do 11 single crochets and then your three black. You're going to do nine single crochets to your red, and then you're going to do five red. And 
and again you're one into the red before you go to red and you're gonna do five You're going to do six single crochets. And you're going to do five red. And 11 single crochets to the end. So that is it for all of our color. Let me zoom you out. Zoop. That's it. For the next four rows, it's just going to be your base color. And uh, then you can fasten off and make your second one. I am not going to put this whole pattern on the screen for you to read because it's 50 rows. So if you're going to make a second piece, you're just going to have to rewatch the video. But um, I'm going to see if I can get chapters put in so that it's easier for you. If you are a reader and not a follower so if you read my patterns that i put up that's where my chapters are going to be so that you don't have to watch the entire video you don't have to watch me crochet you can just go to my written patterns if you're used to how i put my written patterns up and you're familiar with the whole process of the tapestry crochet it's easier just to put chapters in uh, and then you can build your second piece uh, just using the chapters. It'd be a lot simpler. So, um, four rows. Uh, just your base color. So all this can be cut off. So um, make sure you cut this off with a tail so that you can uh, sew it in. Um, it's just at the back and nobody's going to see it. So if you have an extra piece sticking out, you can just tie tie them together or whatever um, that's already cut off but I'm gonna weave him just down the eye so I'm gonna do my four rows off camera I will see you back here after and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do with this pillow There we go. All my ends tucked in. I haven't fastened off yet. I'm still attached, but my ombre doesn't look horrible, horrible. I love <laughs> how I can use up scrap yarn. <laughs> I love that. So I'm not too upset about the ombre. I don't really care. I don't think any guy that this is being given to, because I did guy colors, right? Most guys aren't going to do a tapestry crochet for girls, but, um, so this just needs to get blocked. So I'm going to put up the meaning right now on my screen, what, um, blocking is.
So that's what blocking is. So um, this is just a pillowcase. I'm not going to block mine. Um, the reason being is by the time it's on this little foam cushion that I'm going to do um, and all sewn in and stuff, you're not even going to know that it was ever out of shape. I'm just going to, you know, stretch it out so my stitches all nicely relax and, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to wet block this at all. So, but if you want to block, obviously that's what you're going to do. So, um, I get your little cushion if you're doing a whole thing like me. I'm going to fasten off. I'm going to get my cushion and I'm going to show you how I'm going to make it fit. And I might, you might need a knife if you're working, if you're doing this with me. You might need a bread knife. And I did not um, fasten off with a sewing tail. I just fasten off with a normal tail that I'm going to weave in um, because I'm actually going to crochet. Um, the two ends together around my foam pad. I'm not going to whip stitch, but if you're going to whip stitch, obviously you're going to need a super duper long tail. So I did not do any extra rows um, to make it fit my um, foam pad um, pillow insert. I, um, because I'd already made this guy, right? I'd already made this one. So I did not, um, do any extra stitches. I needed it to be the same size as this. This one I like because my L worked out. This one, not so much. My L has a little, because I wasn't paying attention. But anyway, this is about 15 and a half inches by 14. So the pillow that's going in here, this you can the, these things you can get at Walmart is 12, probably 12 by 12. Yeah, 12 by 12 that I got at Walmart. So you don't really have the edge. I oh that's hard to see, eh? Shadowing. So I don't really have the edge. This is what I have for an edge it doesn't even come up the side. So I only need it to go halfway up this side anyway, but I got so much over here that when I sew the other one on, it's going to be a whole lot. So I thought, let me get this out of the way, that I would take off a couple of inches. Because I have 16 one way and I have 14 the other way. Oh, so I should do about an inch and a half maybe. So if I take off an, about an inch and a half of foam and glue it to the other side. I'm just going to mark this. And then if I glue it to the other side, then it should work out, right? So this stuff is easy to cut just using a bread knife but it needs to be you know super duper easy to cut oh I pulled some off there so if I take some of that off there, move my knife out of the way before I kill myself, and I put this over here, big hair, then it should fit not so bad. Oh yeah, that's much better much better. I'm still going to have a little bit of wiggle room, but that's coming up about halfway and that's coming up about halfway. So I just need to trim off a little piece here. I get this out of the way again. So you can hot glue this or I'll show you in a second. Cut this 
this end off. So, good enough. So, I have this glued. It's E6000 and it will adhere to anything. Anything, anything, anything. So, that's what I'm going to use. But if you use hot glue, you're probably going to be fine as well. This stuff is hard to get out of the container. But, it's super duper great glue. And that's kind of what I want because I don't want this thing moving around. So once you get that there, I'm just going to put flat side to flat side. That'll help the glue adhere better. And it's almost instant with this glue. It's like a super glue, but it's not. So just don't get any on your fingers. So this is uh, non-flammable and it's paintable and it's clear. And it's an industrial strength adhesive, so, and you can use it on fabrics, you can use it, you know, I use it for just my arts and crafts. It's way better than hot glue. Anyway, I'll set that aside. So, now that I've got all my, my foam all set and ready to go, So it's completely up to you um, how you put this together. If you want to um, crochet it together or um, crochet it together or um, whip stitch it, that's completely up to you. Just make sure it's all going in the same direction. Oh, I should probably hide my tail. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm crocheting it together. So I'm going to crochet mine together. I'm going to use a four millimeter. Uh, I don't want, I don't need to use a six for this. And then I'm just going to finish up using my scrap yarn over here. So, attach anywhere you want. Oh, now i got foam pieces all over my stuff. Just make sure you go stitch for stitch. It should still be the same stitch count as you had before. So just make sure. So you can use double crochet or single crochets. I don't need mine to be that noticeable. So um, I'm going to probably just do a single crochet. I want the ridge around it because I want to work into it later. So I don't want to do, um, I, uh, I don't want to do a slip stitch, but that's an option too. If you're not doing anything else, you're just doing the pillow. I'm going to put some border around it after, so I'm going to do just a single crochet. Now make sure you go back into this same space and do a second single crochet after you've connected. And then just obviously stitch for stitch. Because I'm doing something with this later, I'm going to put two in each corner just to keep it square. So just make sure though, you're going stitch for stitch because you don't want any puckering or... And this is the last stitch of the row. 
I'm going to put two single crochets in there just because I want it to stay square. So now this side has no stitches. This is the raw side. Just make sure you've got your rows lined up and you should be able to just keep it even with two at the end of every row. As long as your rows are all lined up. Just make sure you keep them close enough together that aesthetically, oh sorry I'm not even on. Just make sure you keep them close enough together that aesthetically it looks pleasing. So you keep, me, keep seeing me stretching and that's just because I want to match up. See how those two are the same? I just want to match those up just to make sure that I'm getting them all in the same space. Is that blurry or is that my eyes? I can't tell. I got old lady eyes so after crocheting for a while my eyes get blurry. I do have glasses that I should be wearing and generally do when I'm designing dolls or you know whatever. Um, but I, um, I can't wear them and do filming for my videos because I have to read the pattern that I designed and I can't do both with my glasses. So I have to go without when I film. So anyway, just plug along at your thing and don't forget you to leave some space for you to either get stuffing in if you're just stuffing it or your foam pad. And then you can meet me back here after to um, do a border if you want. But if you're not going to then well, I'm just going to say thanks for joining me guys. to the ones that are leaving after this. Anyway, I'm not sure what kind of border I'm going to put considering it's a guy's pillow, but so I'm just coming to the end. I'm just going to make sure like I didn't weave in any of my stragglers, so I'm just going to make sure I tuck that down in there. And again, I'm coming to this corner that I'm going to make sure I put two um, single crochets in them. Well, I know I'm not sure why I'm so awkward all of a sudden. I'm going to put two single crochets in them. So, right here where I fasten off is a strange spot. So I'm going to put two in there. And then this side has stitches that you can follow. So, um, continue doing that and I will see you right back after we're done. So I am back around. Um, I put my two in here on this stitch already when I started. So I am just going to fasten off. Um, if you're, sorry, I'm not fastening off. Um, if you're doing a, um, a border like I am, then don't fasten off. But So now you just got to obviously move your stuff around but uh, I can't even see the white foam through that so it was a good hook size that I chose to use I got foam on the back of my from when I cut it but 
that is the pillow so this you've got a little extra room you can stuff it if you want but i'm actually don't don't mind that it's better than this being tight right so and because it's foam that's not going to slide around on it or or anything so yeah so um if you're sticking around to do a border with me that's what we're going to do next all right so for those of you that stuck around let's get this border done so this is pillows meant for a, a man so you don't necessarily have to do what i'm doing here this is the border that i came up with so i've chained one because it um, this is be where you would fasten off so I've chained one I'm gonna skip this first stitch because I don't want to use it because that's kind of almost my chain one space so I'm just gonna pop over here and I'm gonna go into the first stitch and pull up a loop I'm gonna go into the next stitch and pull up a loop next stitch pull up a loop next stitch pull up a loop so that's what I do one two three four your fifth stitch you're going to pull up a loop so you should have six loops on it's really hard to film this and hold the pillow at the same time so you should have six loops on over the course of five stitches you're going to yarn over and pull through all of those loops I don't know if this is blurry or not blurry you're going to chain one and then chain one so basically a chain two there the first chain one is just to secure and then the other chain one is to give me the height you're going to go back into this circle so now you've created this circle with your chain one to secure it so I need you to go back into that circle pull up a loop there's my pointer thingy this here if you turn it sideways it's a stitch it's got two pieces but I just want you to go through the front piece of that stitch so right down here it's almost like a pico why is that blurry I don't know if that's blurry or that's my eyeballs but anyway you're gonna go into that like a pico spot pull up a stitch that's two then go into the stitch that it's shared it's shared with what you were doing before that's three and then two more next stitch and the next stitch is five so you should have six loops on you're gonna yarn over and pull through all of those loops you're gonna secure it and chain one it so I'll keep showing you the pattern is quite um, fantastic um, I really really hope my camera's not blurry right now it's so hard to show you when I get a pillow <laughs> okay I need to adjust okay I hope this is easier to see so we've got our second one done and our chain one so now you're gonna go into this hole that you've you did to secure it has created a hole you're gonna go into that one you're gonna pull up a loop you're going to go into the front loop of this and you're going to pull up a loop you're going to go into this shared stitch from the previous one that's three and then these next two stitches four and five you're going to yarn over and pull through all of those you're going to secure it and chain one so it's hard to really tell right now let's do a few more go into the secure hole front loop of this stitch shared stitch the next two stitches yarn over pull through all of them secure it chain one it repeat one two three four five try to keep everything loosey-goosey
So you get something that looks like that around the, bo around the border of the pillow. So it's not girly per se. It's um, not masculine, <laughs> but it's not girly. So that's what you get. They're almost like upside down shells or sideways shells maybe. So again, go into the hole that you've, your secure hole, your front loop here, like a Pico, your shared stitch, and then the next two stitches. Pulling up loops, keeping it all nice and loosey-goosey. Pull through all of them, secure, chain one. Go into the secure hole, front loop, Pico, sort of. I'm just going to say that. Shared stitch. Pull up when you do it. Next stitch. Next stitch. Pull through all six. Chain. Secure and chain one. So just keep doing this all the way around. And it actually goes pretty quick. I know it doesn't seem like it while I'm in this process of showing you, but it actually does go quite quick. So continue with that, and then we're gonna be done with our border. So I've come all the way back around, and you can see by your own work what it looks like. It's an absolutely gorgeous stitch to use for a border. So I'm just gonna do my last one That's my, where I started, the last one I'm going into. So I've chained two. I'm just gonna come over here to do my slip stitch. Every single corner, um, because it's round, will flip over anyway. So I'm just gonna go into that stitch down there And I'm going to slip stitch, fasten off, and we are done. So I just wanted to show you, um, where is it? So here I had to switch rolls. I ran out of what I had before and I had to switch rolls. So in that case, I finished the stitch. And then when I did my chain two, I just fastened off there. And then I just put a slip knot on my hook and start it all over again in this spot. So um, if by any chance the same thing happened to you, <laughs> I just wanted to show you how I'm going to solve that problem. I'm just going to come over with this and go right into that stitch. Sorry, it's hard to stay on camera. And I'm just going to pull that over. I'm going to tie the smallest of knots a super duper tight double knot before I weave just in case I mean I don't think you could get away with not doing it and then there shouldn't be much of it you shouldn't really notice much just because of the pattern I think to begin with and I'm just going to turn it around and weave on this end even though this end has words too I'm just going to be very polite about it but there's more stitches to weave into on this side than there are. Now, the knot also, you'll never see it. You'll never feel it. And that just means I don't have to weave as far as I would normally if... Um, I'm just going to zoom out since you can't see a thing I'm doing anyway. Um, I wouldn't have to weave as far. And when I pull... I'm going to go two different directions and then when I pull that knot gets sucked right down in there and you'll never even know that I even put a knot there. And that is that. So doesn't matter what side um, 
I'm going to show the blue side, not that it makes a difference, but the blue is brighter than the green, so... And just weave in your end. I'm just going to flip it back over. Finish my weaving. And then we are done. I, um... got foam <clears throat> from when I cut it all over the place. There we go. That's as far out as I can go. There we go. Our I love you pillow. Um, I was going to do it in the shape of a, one of those candied hearts, but I couldn't find a, a square piece of foam to cut into a heart shape that was big enough for the pattern so thanks for joining me guys I really hope you enjoyed it and let me know what you think about the border I think it's an absolutely beautiful stitch and it works with both male and female so it doesn't matter who you're giving this to it should work out perfectly fine and your grandma even your grandma would love it thanks for joining me guys I'll see you in the next video